Amen. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Now, ushers, um, I gave you something to start passing out today. Um, and I want to give every person here a key. These are, you can't maybe see it, but this is a little key. And I'm going to make sure that every person in this room has a key in your hand to understand what I feel like the Lord is saying to us about unlocking in this season. How many understand that keys are pretty little, but they can open really big doors? They can bring an ignition and start things. They can give you access and they can give you ability to move forward in your life and your destiny. Amen? How many put it? Well, you know what? In, in these days, you don't even have to put the key in the ignition. But you have to have the key. Come on. You have to have the key. So I'm giving you a key because a few weeks ago I had a vision. We believe that God speaks in dreams and visions. And during a time of prayer, I had a vision. It was very short. Jesus walked up to me with a key ring and put a key ring in my hand that had three keys on it. A gold one, a silver one, and a dark or bronze one. It looked kind of ancient. And he said, use these to go unlock the more. Use these to go unlock the more. How many have already received grace? But how many want more grace? <laughs> how many have received peace? But how many want more peace? How many have already received power? How many want to operate more power? Amen? He said, use these to go unlock the more. And I knew that these keys that he was giving to us were keys that the ecclesia were going to need in this new season to unlock new authority, to unlock the heavens, to unlock the earth, to unlock resources, and, uh, and to unlock favor. And I knew that every one of those keys had a specific purpose, which we're going to talk about in just a little bit. But I also understood that certain things that have been locked up until this time, were being unlocked. And I knew that certain things that had been, had felt inaccessible to us until this time were being made accessible. How many have some things that you know, they're like right there, but you just haven't quite been able to, to, to grab them, okay? I really feel like the Lord's saying, I'm putting keys in your hand to give you the ability to unlock that which has been locked up and to gain access to things that have seemed to be inaccessible. And I heard the Lord say, I want to unlock more in you. Put your hand on your belly. I want to lock more in you so that I can unlock more for you and then unlock more through you. It's got to start by God unlocking some things on the inside of us. Now, to really understand what the Lord is saying, I had to do a deep dive on the significance of the one that holds the key, the keeper of the keys. And Jesus actually gave us one of the most significant scriptures for the ecclesia, for the church, about our kingdom authority in Matthew chapter 16, and I want to read that to you. He says, you are Peter. Your may not, name not, may not be Peter. Jesus was speaking to Peter in that day, but he's speaking to his church. He said, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. That is the word ecclesia. Everybody say ecclesia. The Greek term that was a governmental term and a military term, not a religious term. I will build my ecclesia, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Hold your key up. I will give you the keys of the kingdom, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Another translation says, what you forbid will be forbidden, and what you allow will be allowed. So my question is, what are we forbidding and what are we allowing? Are we using those keys? Are we using our kingdom authority to lock some things up? I, I know that you guys know this story, but I want to tell you a little bit about how we took this scripture 
back, I, I think it was like 2010, when the oil spill happened, the, the, the Gulf, BP oil spill that happened out in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, you know, it, it happened off the coast of Louisiana, but it spilled millions and millions and millions of, of crude oil into the Gulf of Mexico. And it went into Louisiana, it destroyed estuaries, it destroyed wildlife all along the coast of Louisiana, then it moved to Mississippi, then it moved to Alabama, and it was coming here. And so we happen to be a part of um, a, a, a team of ministers um, from the Destin to Santa Rosa Beach area that are a bunch of pastors that just under, j we just get it about praying. And I'm talking about people that are Lutheran, Episcopal, um, Methodist, Baptist. Come on, these people are like, they're hungry to see God move in this, in this area. Did y'all hear what I said? There, there's a church that's alive in this area, amen? And so we got together and prayed, and we made some decrees, and we began to declare that God had given us authority over the panhandle area of Florida. And yes, it had come ashore in Louisiana and Mississippi and Alabama, but this was our territory, so we had a responsibility. So we made some decrees. And that team of pastors, I think I was out of town, but Apostle Tom went with this team of pastors. They got on a boat with big, gigantic bottles of anointing oil. And they went out Destin East Pass, crazy pastors. They went out Destin East Pass, and they went five or six miles out into the Gulf where the oil spill was. And they took those giant bottles of anointing oil, and they poured anointing oil on oil spill oil. And they said, you can't come to our shores. So that's, that's a little crazy, right? Then we actually took our church down to the beach on Wednesday nights, and we'd have our people put their feet in the, in the sand and in the water. We'd put our hands out to the, to the waves, and we forbid the oil from coming onto our beaches. What are we forbidding? What are we allowing? <laughs> We actually took a, a group of 150 people from this church out on one of these big party barges and uh, out uh, through, again, through Destin and Destin East Pass, and we took giant bags of rock salt, like Elisha when he threw salt in the water and said there's no more death or barrenness because we were having some deformed fish and deformed wildlife that was starting to happen because of all the chemicals they were using to treat this. And we basically began to make decrees against the oil spill, and we decreed that there would be no more death or barrenness in our area, in our land. And you know, it was about a week later that the, 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 head, the headlines in the paper and the headlines on the Internet said for some strange reason, the oil from the oil spill has disappeared. You can go look it up. They were like, it's, it's baffled the, the, the scientists, it's baffled the military, it's baffled everybody that's been dealing with this. But for some reason, the oil spill is now gone. What's that? And the fish were good. After that, matter of fact, we started seeing new fish species that normally don't uh, inhabit our Gulf waters in this area actually started coming. My point is this: Are we using our keys? Why don't we use them? Because we're so limited in our thinking to think, really, we're going to pour oil on the oil spill oil and something's going to happen? I'm telling you, God loves those kinds of prophetic acts that get us out of ourselves because I understand that nothing that we did did anything except come into agreement with God and begin to say what he was saying in this earth realm because as we spoke it in the earth, God unlocked it in the heaven. As God unlocked it in the heaven, he began to bless us in the earth. We've been given keys.